Hey everyone, it's Justin again. In this video, we're going to be moving on to a new method for rewriting and solving quadratics, completing the square. If you've forgotten how to factor perfect square trinomials, go back to unit 13 and refresh your memory because it will be used a lot in the next few lessons. At the end of this lesson, you will be able to rewrite and factor quadratic expressions by completing the square. Before we can do that, we'll need to review perfect square trinomials. Then we'll take a look at what completing the square means and do a couple of examples to get the hang of it, before I give you one of your own to try. Remember in the last unit when we learned about perfect square trinomials and how they could be factored into squared binomials? We're going to be using that same concept here, except this time we'll be taking expressions that are not perfect square trinomials and tacking on whatever's necessary to force them into the right form. In a way, we're cheating the system. If the expression doesn't factor the way we want, we can use algebra to make it do so. Let's look at how this works. This is not a perfect square trinomial, so at the moment, we can't rewrite it as a binomial squared. So what would we need in order to do so? Remember that in a perfect square trinomial, the middle coefficient comes from adding the same number twice. This six had to come from adding three and three. We know from factoring that those same two numbers that add to make the middle term have to multiply to make the constant. So what is the constant? 3 times 3 would be 9. We made that constant just right so that it could be factored into a squared binomial. This is what completing the square means, manipulating the expression so that it's a perfect squared trinomial and can thus be factored into a squared binomial. We can even check it to make sure. x times x makes x squared x times 3 makes 3x, three and so does 3 times x, and 3 times 3 makes 9. Those 3x's will combine to make 6x, and we get back to where we were before we factored. It's important to note that the original expression and what we factored are not the same. You can't just add 9 and expect it to be the same value. What we did there broke a major algebra rule. If you add something to one side, you have to do the same to the other side. But an expression only has one side. In the next lesson, we're going to learn how to apply this to quadratic equations, which actually have two sides. But for now, we'll ignore the rules so that we can practice this piece by itself. Time for some examples. Our goal is simple. Add something to this expression so we can factor it into a squared binomial. Just like last time, we have to figure out what the middle term could be split into. In this case, it would be negative 5 and negative 5. The number we need to add is these multiplied together. And negative 5 times negative 5 makes positive 25. By adding 25, we've made this a perfect square trinomial, meaning we completed the square. Now, we could factor it. It's x plus negative 5 squared. Or if we wanted a little neater, we could change plus a negative to minus. You might think the 25 means you should use positive 5, but if we did, then we'd get a positive 10 in the middle. By using negative 5, we guarantee that the middle coefficient will come out to negative 10. Time for a trickier one. Same goal here, complete the square. So what's half of 3? Uh, this is what makes it tricky. Since 3 isn't an even number, half of it will be a decimal. This doesn't seem like too big a deal until you realize that the next step is to multiply them together. 1.5 times 1.5 is what I'm going to type into my calculator. Uh huh, And we get 2.25. Even though it involved decimals, we're still able to complete the square. We could factor it into x plus 1.5 squared, since 1.5 times 1.5 is what makes the 2.25.
All right, your turn. Pause this video and try to complete this square. In order to complete this square, we have to split negative 24 in half. So that's negative 12 and negative 12. Then if we multiply these together, we get positive 144. That additional 144 has allowed us to complete the square. If we wanted to, we could factor this perfect square trinomial into x minus 12 squared. As a quick reminder, this is not the factored form of the original expression. In order to get this squared binomial, we had to break the rules and add an extra number that wasn't there to begin with. In the next video, we're going to be using completing the square to solve quadratic equations. So we'll actually be able to follow the both sides rule. See you then.